Honourable Members, you have all been advised of uh, an urgent question for today's sitting in the name of Mr Hooper, and I call on the Honourable Member for <coughs> Ramsey to ask his urgent question. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Uh, I would like to ask the Minister for Education if he will make a statement on the ongoing industrial action being taken in connection with the teachers' pay dispute and what measures are in place to mitigate any impact on students and staff. And the Minister for Education, Sport and Culture, Dr Allenson, to reply. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It was with a sense of profound disappointment that I recently received a letter from the General Secretary of the NASUWT, Dr Patrick Roach, who leads one of the four unions representing teachers on the Isle of Man. In it, he gave notice that from Wednesday the 7th of October, he would be asking local members to take a range of industrial actions which could further disrupt our schools. This is part of their ongoing dispute with the Isle of Man government over pay, pensions and working conditions, including workload. The additional action short of strike are that NASUWT members will be asked not to accept the direction of the department or their head teacher to cooperate with any activity around the school's quality assurance process, not to provide cover for absences except in the case of a teacher employed wholly or mainly for the purpose of providing <coughs> such cover, not to cooperate with all existing working practices and new initiatives that have not been subject to a workload impact assessment agreed with the NASUWT. In addition, he would recommend that local NASUWT members only meet with or report to parents during timetable teaching time and that they only undertake or attend CPD-related activities to that are linked to their own appraisal targets. These proposed actions will potentially affect activities which are carried out in break times and many after-school clubs. If multiple teachers are absent in one particular school, for whatever reason, it could lead to staffing shortages. Head teachers have already contacted parents to alert them of the possibility, in extreme situations, that students from different year groups and subjects may need to be taught together in a larger room for a lesson if their regular teacher is absent. Head teachers have pledged to do their best to minimise this disruption by increasing the number of external cover teachers and by using members of the school's leadership team. The Department of Education, Sport and Culture is working hard to enable an early meeting with unions to seek to resolve this dispute. Staff from the Education Improvement Service and other members of the department with a teaching background have been made available to support schools where required. Thank you. Supplementary question, Mr Hooper. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you very much, Minister, for that answer. He mentioned there uh, a lot of work that's being put in place by head teachers to help mitigate staffing shortages. I, I didn't really hear much other than offering department staff to support schools. What are the measures the department themselves are taking? Uh, in one of the, the letters that was sent out to parents, uh, there was made uh, parents were informed and made aware of potential consequences on the running of the school. I'd like to. to really ask the Minister if he can provide some reassurance here that the Department is going to provide uh, all the support that is necessary to head teachers to enable them to take and mitigate whatever impacts there are on their school running at this time. Minister, to reply. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Member makes a very valid point. One of the problems with this industrial action is it's very hard to anticipate whether there will be staff shortages on a day-to-day -day basis, because often teachers go absent at short notice. What the department has been doing is working with head teachers to support them, to support their efforts to maintain good communications with the teachers and the pupils, to put the pupils' um, interests first during this very challenging time for all of us. But also the department will be offering all support that is required by head teachers to keep the normal running of their schools as efficiently as possible. Thank you. Supplementary question, Ms. Edge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'd like to ask, ask the Minister, the Honourable Member, for Ramsey. Um, I believe it was publicly announced that he would again meet with the unions in September. We're now in October, and I believe that that meeting hasn't taken place. Can the Minister please comment on that? Minister, to reply. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Before I comment on that, could the Honourable Member. Um, previously made a declaration of an interest she had at the PAC hearing, and perhaps it might be useful for her to make that again in this Honourable House. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Yes, I'm happy to state that I was a full member of the Association of College and School Leaders. I'm now just an associate. Thank you, Mr Speaker. 
Dr. Adams. Thank you very much. I thought that was important just for, for the record, and I thank the Honourable Member for making that declaration. Um, in terms of meeting with the unions, yes, I have met with local union representatives um, in September. Um, there are ongoing meetings, both formally and informally, with all representatives, both locally and nationally, of the teacher unions, and the Department is committed to um, settle this dispute in a fair and equi equitable way. Thank you. So, for entry question, Mr. Robert Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wonder whether the Minister would consider going back to the unions uh, to, to ask them whether they would suspend the action for the time being on the basis that an enormous amount of work has been done in recognition of the teachers' justifiable concerns in the form of the Beeman's report um, and, in fact, significant changes that have taken place in the department. And is it, does he not agree with me that now is a time for calm, uh, calmness on, on all parts and that perhaps, if I express a view shared in this court, that a period be set aside to suspend the action, awaiting the further work that clearly has to now carry through uh, to enable a, a calmer future for our important education sector. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Minister, should reply. Um, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for, for those words. I, I agree with him. I think it's very important that the Department acts as well as talks and shows a genuine commitment to changes in the education service of our island to put children and their families first, but also to support those staff who provide the valuable education that we all appreciate. And perhaps after the, the um, experience of the last six months, we appreciate, appreciate even more because I think a lot of parents have had to adopt the role of teachers and have found out how difficult it is. Um, I, the interim um, chief executive of the department has met with the teacher representatives and did ask them to postpone this action on the basis of the changes that we've already, t already put in place and the ongoing work that we will do with this house, with the teaching community and with parents and their pupils to make our education system on the island better. So that, was, that, that request was um, delivered to the, the union in, in question. Um, unfortunately, they decided to go ahead with their um, action. Um, but again, that is their right. They've gone through a ballot of that, and I, and I respect that decision. What I'd like to do is make the House um, aware that we are in negotiations. We are trying to find a way through this um, that will settle this dispute, which has, I think, um, tarnished the relationship with the departments and, and teachers at a time when we are trying to reconfigure the education service so that these, these divisions between teachers, schools, department and parents is actually broken down and we have a unified education service which does exactly what it should be doing which is provide learning and teaching for our children and young people. Thank you. Supplementary question, Mr Morehouse. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I'm a former teacher and still in the union. Will direct action at direct additional funding be made available to assist head teachers during this challenging time to get the additional cover staff that may be required. Minister Schiffler. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Several head teachers have contacted me already, saying that they will, if possible, use supply teachers. Although the very essence of covering absences can sometimes make that quite a challenge, but certainly the department will be supporting schools financially should they request that. Thank you. Supplementary question, Mr. Hooper. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think the minister alluded in his in his answers to some of the disruption that's already being experienced by students and staff uh, as a result of, of COVID. Students have already been very badly disrupted because of that, because of the enforced lockdown. There's more disruption by the signs of things coming now because of this action. Can the minister advise us what work is already underway to make sure that coming out of the other side of this, students are not going to be left disadvantaged as a result? Minister Triplett. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Speaker. Um, the, the Honourable Member for Rems makes a very good point that we're going into a new academic year with, a, with the backlog of um, damage that was done due to the school lockdown and the lockdown of our whole communities, and also into, into a winter of insecurity and anxiety. Um, and so I had hoped to avoid this sort of action so that we could work together. All teacher unions and teachers have been working very closely um, with departmental members, with the Department of Public Health and with the Department of Health to draw up contingency plans to tackle any 
um, a new outbreak of COVID-19 on, on the island as part of a pan-governmental effort. So I can assure the Honourable Member that a huge amount of work has gone on together to try to make our schools as resilient as possible, make sure that they're a safe place for both pupils and staff. Furthermore, there is also obviously some anxiety about the exams next year and whether they'll take place or whether they'll be postponed slightly. And we, the department is constantly watching that. We have done quite a lot in terms of trying to increase the provision of mental health and well-being guidance for schools to support those schools dealing with the anxieties of their children. That, that attends and the young people that attend there and also the, their families and we shall constantly respond to the needs of head teachers in a, as, a, as more as thorough a way as possible to support our schools and our teachers to give the education to our pupils that they deserve thank you so your question Ms. edge uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'd like to ask the Honourable Minister, with regards to a specific meeting date to meet with all of the unions and under their collective bargaining agreements, there's um, elements to this dispute that are not just about teaching and learning and other areas. Um, I think, obviously, the biggest area is pay. Can the Minister confirm that he has discussed with Treasury a possible way forward, and when will he meet with the unions? Um, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, ministers meeting with unions to go through contract and pay negotiations is something that I think most politicians would try to avoid. What the Beeman's report, for instance, recommended was that the Office of Human Resources should take the lead on such negotiations. But I personally contacted the Manx Industrial Relations Service two weeks ago to ask them to put into play a formal meeting with all um, teacher, represent teacher union representatives under the collective bar bargaining agreements. Thank what you. Date is Supplementary that question, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I would like to ask the Minister for Education about three uh, gestures or statements today that might help industrial relations. And I do this as a politician who took part in, even led the negotiations that led to a three year pay settlement across the public service. Firstly, would the um, Minister agree that the cost sharing as part of public sector <coughs> pensions has been put back from 2020 to 2022? And fewer than 20 teachers responded to the consultation. So could the Minister make a clear statement that that issue potentially can still be reviewed in the next couple of years to calm things down? Secondly, would the Minister agree that a big issue is about the statistics of inflation and wage uh, rises over the last 10 years? So would the Minister agree it would be very helpful to review the statistics of those things to build understanding and confidence amongst the teaching profession to aid a settlement of this issue? And thirdly, would the Minister agree that the Industrial Relations Forum that I wrote to unions to establish in May 2020 could usefully be engaged to rebuild relations with uh, trade unions at this delicate moment? Minister to reply. <coughs> thank you very much, um, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for raising the, those three points. And if I can go through them one by one, um, again, in a, a, I think it was in another place we discussed the cost sharing um, proposals for the public sector pensions, and that was agreed unanimously, and that's now gone, gone forward. So I think it would be difficult to go backwards on that, but, but certainly if the unions bring that up as, as a subject for, for negotiation, we will listen. In terms of inflation and wage rises, obviously there, there is um, uh, an, an opinion that um, teacher pay has slipped behind the pay in the United Kingdom for a range of reasons. There is also the reality that a lot of um, public sector workers' pay has not increased significantly because of a period of austerity that this island and the rest of the world went through. Um, the Cabinet Office has produced some very good details in terms of that, in terms of benchmarking what happened on the island with other, other jurisdictions, and I'm more than happy to look into that. I'd also like to thank him for his previous work in terms of resurrecting the Industrial Relations Forum, and that is now in, in place, and they are, they are having regular meetings, and Minister Harmer is chairing those um, with success, because I think it's very important um, that we look at the relationship between central government and a range of unions who work across the, pri the pri private and public sector to make sure that every voice is heard and every opinion is counted. Thank you. Supplementary question, Mrs Barber. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, 
we've had the, the lockdown and now potential co-location of classes where the focus would not be able to be on teaching of the students. Um, we also have uh, heard that there'll be a lack of online learning availability for students and some students are already missing out due to ill health. Um, we now don't have parents' evenings in some schools. Could the Minister assure us what he's doing in terms of looking at a formal online learning resource that could be used for those students who are not able to attend school under any circumstance because they're self-isolating, having travelled for medical purposes, medical reasons, or they're unable to attend for their own ill health um, or their parents' families' ill health, and how that could then be potentially used during this situation to actually help all of our students? I'm conscious that we are somewhat straying from the uh, original question. Minister, to reply. I'm happy to reply, um, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Member for bringing um, this, this topic up. There has been a lot of work over the summer in terms of online learning provision, um, and that work has been both within the department initially to analyse what happened and the lessons to be learnt from the previous lockdown, but also work together with all teachers and all those um, teacher representatives to create a better system um, to, look, to go forward. Because I think what the, the lockdown and the um, use of online learning and remote learning showed was that there are a range of possibilities here that, that go above and beyond pure COVID and can be used to enhance a mixed blend of, of learning, both for those um, students in school or UCM, but also those who can't attend school for a whole range of reasons, whether that be self-isolation or illness. Um, I'm happy to say that after a, a series of meetings with teachers, we've now um, formalised a protocol for, di for distance learning and also a set of minimum requirements but also expectations for parents which I think is very important that they get to know what will be provided and we aim to launch that and publicise that in the very near future. Thank you Mr Speaker.